Okay, <clears throat> I said I would be back if this didn't work exactly like I said, and it will, but I, in my haste to try to get a video done, left out a part. Put your gaskets in place. Don't leave them in place, but just put them in place. They will align the tabs and make sure that your bolt holes are lined up. And that's what I didn't do. And this gasket was up a little too far this way. Now this gasket is not coming out. When you glue these down, like I said, and I like this kind. It's got these separate ribs and it's basically flat. I will still put a bead of silicone, a daub of silicone here and here. Same with on this end. I will put silicone around the bottom side of this gasket at the water ports. But make sure you line everything up, which, like I said, I didn't do. All right. We're going to go with the stock sequence, torque sequence, and the stock torque specs. Torque specs are 30 pounds. We're going to do this in two steps. First step is going to be about 15. I can't remember if I got this set at 14 or 15, but. And I've already done this. That's one. This is two. This is three. This is four. This, most guys do these in just a circle pattern, but that's not actually the sequence in what you're supposed to do them in. That's five. That's six. Seven jumps up to the front here. Seven. Eight. Staying on the same side. Nine. Ten. Going to the rear of the front. Eleven. Ouch. That was my finger. Twelve. So it's not really a circle, only right in the very center. One, two, three, four. Then it jumps five, six, seven, eight. So it's front, rear, front, rear. It jumps to here. It goes rear, front, rear, front. Now, if you can just remember all that, you got it made. Maybe the circle sequence isn't that bad. I'm going to do this in um, oh, probably about three deals instead of the two like I originally said. Okay, kind of stepped ahead here. Uh, this thing is getting to be a pain to work with. I built myself my own oil pump driver, which I need to rework. But the main thing is, is that I want to make sure I'm getting oil up to all of the rockers. We're running about 65 pounds of pressure. This one's got oil, this one's got oil, this one's got oil. All of those have got oil. I've got four here, five here in the front that don't aren't getting oil yet. I'm only 
going to put a valve cover on this side because I know all of these are oiling. And then I will come back and run it some more until all of these, these last five, start getting oil. It's just a matter of it's just got to pump the air out of it. But 65 pounds of pressure, that's good enough for me. So, like, here. This is the pump I built. Pretty straightforward, simple. It's just an old distributor. Ground the gear off down here. And cut off the top. Weld the washer on so it don't drop. And like I say, then you plug in an oil gauge so you know what kind of oil pressure you got. This thing should be good to go. And that's how simple it is to build one of those. Okay, thought I'd bring you back real quick. That's the front five that weren't oiling. You can see they got all got oil now. Still running 65 pounds of pressure, and you can see the oil running off the top of the valve. So, we should be good to go. All right, there it is. That's pretty much what it's going to look like. I'm going to put a quarter inch spacer underneath the carburetor. Gotta get the bolts for the thermostat, got the chrome brackets for the alternator. Everything else is painted up from timing chain cover, which you can't even see now. Barely, maybe right there. Valve covers. She's pretty much just about ready to drop in. So, again. Okay, one more little tip, trick, whatever you want to call it. You see that tiny little hole there? That's Five sixty-fourths hole. A lot of guys drill an eighth-inch hole. I don't. It affects the characteristics of the thermostat just a bit. I just want enough for an air bleed so that I can fill the cooling system up and not have to sit here and run it and watch the engine get hot and then thermostat finally open up and then it's a sudden flood of cold water the other thing is on the distributor if we get up here this is number one cylinder plug hole oh, you can't see my finger there well I'll do it this way come up here right to there and you see the rotor? Barely. Alright, that's number one cylinder. The rotor is pointed at number one. I take the distributor, the vacuum advance, and I point it off over this direction. Not all the way back here, but you could. But that's number one on the distributor cap. Now since you're wanting advanced timing, you're going to set it about here. That should be right. I'm not going to say it is, because I'm not one of them guys that can just set a distributor in and go, oh, I set that at 30 degrees advanced timing. I can't do it. I have tried, but I can't do it. So, we're going to go right there. And if it's wrong, worst case scenario, I take it loose, pull the distributor up, bring it back a tooth, or forward a tooth, whichever way I need to go, and drop it back in. It's not that big of a deal. I am waiting on a, oh, I'm putting on the Elderbrock, and I am waiting on a quarter inch spacer plate 
put on here to actually utilize the dual plane on this. I was going to drop this down a quarter of an inch, but Elder Brock is very intimate about do not use an open spacer on their carburetors. Why? I have no idea. I just know that in the paperwork it says do not use. And the only other thing I got is I got to get go buy a plug because the plug out of the old intake manifold would not fit. But I got that in. I got that in. All this is buttoned up and pretty much ready to go. She's all in one piece. Like, share, share wherever, subscribe, ring the bell, tell somebody, tell 12 somebodies, I don't care. I do and I don't. But hey, maybe next time I'll have something you'll be interested in. Bye.